Hey there, my name is Jay. In this podcast, you're going to hear Amber and Kayleen have a conversation about how we build the technology for E2 School and E2 Language and how we use insights from teaching and learning to build the technology. We don't just take technology and try to use it for language learning. We build it from the inside out for you. So take a listen. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hello, Kayleen. Hi, Amber. It's so great to be able to talk together for this episode. So today, we're going to look at how learning has shaped the technology we use here at E2. That's right. You know, the assumption is that technology shapes learning. But for us and our experience here, the reverse is actually true. We focused on learning and the students first. Then we created and adapted the technology to help us do this. Exactly, that's so true. Uh, And well, what we're gonna focus on in this episode is some key features of E2 School, which is the sister school to E2 Language. We'll also take a look at the technology we're using at E2 School and talk about the benefits of online learning and the online live class experience. Can't wait to get started. But before that, let's start by introducing ourselves. Good plan. So uh, my name's Amber and I'm one of the live class teachers and instructional designers at E2 School. I'm in charge of developing our pronunciation and grammar courses. Well, I'm Kayleen and I'm, I guess I'm effectively the head of the E2 School because I've got the whole general courses under my belt. And I'm also one of the instructional designers who created these courses. I also get to teach some of the live classes and train other schools how to use our technology. I find I'm really excited to be working for this company, E2, because they're embracing these emerging technologies. Actually, I think E2 are also responsible for creating some of this tech, so we're right at the forefront of it all. Mm, It's incredibly exciting, isn't it? Now, I know we've both been working for E2 School for quite some time now, since the start of 2019. But can you just tell us a little bit about your background before this and what brought you to teaching? Yes, definitely. Well, about 15 years ago, I began teaching ESL, which is English as a Second Language, and I was teaching in Prague, which is the Czech Republic. And I found the Czech students were amazing at honing my grammar skills. They were very unforgiving if you made grammar mistakes. (laughs) Uh, Then when I returned to Australia, I found that Australia had a lot lot stronger focus on academic English Mm -hmm. and uh, I found that multicultural issues were much more of a problem as well. Things like pronunciation and intonation. Um, I found that all of these skills though have been (laughs) utilised in creating these courses that we've made and teaching them here at E2 School. Mm. But enough about me, what about you Amber? (laughs) Well, you know, it's interesting. I've had quite a similar journey in that I've also taught overseas, so in a range of countries and teaching contexts. Um, I taught my very first class back in uh, 2012 and completely fell in love with it then and have been in love with it ever since, really. Um, But it it wasn't until joining E2 School that I began to teach online. Um, Up until that point, it had all been the more traditional face-to-face classroom teaching experience. So it's been quite a journey, really. Um, (laughs) But on that note, speaking of online teaching and online learning, let's take a closer look then at E2 School. So, Kelleen, can you give us an overview of what E2 School offers from a student perspective? Sure. Let me just share the screen right now. Mm -hmm. So when I look at E2 School, what we have is the building blocks, how to improve general English. And so what we've got is all the levels starting at level zero, which is our starter level, and they go all the way up to an advanced level, which we're calling level four. Um, All the levels correspond with the CEFR framework as well as the IELTS band numbers. Uh, So for example, if you were an intermediate student, we'd be recommending a level two course. But Mm. as well as these, to complement these courses, you also have the top two courses on that picture, which are the grammar review and the speaking lab. But these are your specialty, Amber. Mm. So can you explain what they are? 
Yes, I'd love to. Well, I'll start with grammar review first. So um, this is a course that covers the different parts of speech in English. So we've got a section on adjectives, for example, big section on verbs, section on articles, section on uh, adverbs and so on. And then um, each section has a lesson and then we uh, practice the different skills for each grammar area. So some reading, listening, speaking and writing activities. Um, and then on the other hand, we've got speaking labs. So um, as you said, this is our pronunciation course. And at the moment, it's focusing on the different phonemes of English, so the 44 different sounds or phonemes. And we have a range of listening and speaking and spelling activities in there. There's so much for the students to learn. It's so, it's so true. It's so true. It's, you know, I really, I take my hat off to, to anybody undertaking the process of learning a language. It's so many different intricate pieces that fit together. It's a huge undertaking. So mm. for us, when we look at where does a student start, we usually recommend that a student takes three of these courses at least. So mm. the Speaking Lab and Grammar Review course, because they complement which, whichever level the student is studying. So if they were an upper intermediate student, I would be recommending level three, Grammar Review and Speaking Lab. Mm -hmm. And this way, because it's self-study, they can choose to jump in and out of these different activities. Like they can do a reading activity in that level course and then go and do some extra grammar study focusing on that particular feature or some mm -hmm. pronunciation work to go with a listening or a speaking activity. But of course, the other bonus is they've got live classes and they can either attend or watch the recordings from these live classes on our platform too. Mm. So, you know, speaking of live classes, it's really amazing what technology has done for online learning and, and education, right? I mean, it, it has so many different roles in education. I mean, when we think about it, we use it for learning management systems. We use it to build our online courses. And of course, we use it to teach through platforms like Zoom. But I think it's quite interesting. I've seen a lot of technology that's been adapted for educational purposes but rarely been created specifically for language learning. So what makes E2 School different? Well, I think E2 School is special. At the start, we looked at the learning management systems available, the, the ones that are already created and out there, and mm. we decided they didn't really fit the bill. So we actually created our own. And that means now we have a purpose-built platform for language learning. It also means that we have our own development team, our tech team who have built the whole system from the ground up. And the best part about this is that if we need to do something different, we can actually change it or even build it mm. and create something new. All you need is time. <laughs> yes, they really are superstars, aren't they? Oh. And it's, it's amazing to know that if you've got an idea, there will be a way to make it happen. That's so true. And one of my favorite things is the widgets. Now, widgets is the term we use in instructional design, but these are actually the individual little pieces that we use to make up a lesson. And you can put multiple widgets together and create an amazing activity for the students to do. One of my favorites is the drag and drop widget. So you can get a picture and type in the words and get the students to drag the words to match the picture. It makes vocabulary learning so much more realistic and mm. approachable. I so agree with that. You know, it's I, I, it reminded me of something just then in that one of the things that I, I always loved about face-to-face -face teaching was that some of the kinesthetic activities where you could move things and have that experience of, you know, shuffling papers around or matching things. And the drag and drop is a way of kind of converting the kinesthetic element of activities to an online situation. So true. And it's so easy to forget that we've got visual learners and auditory learners, but there are also mm. the kinesthetic aspect as well needs to be touched on. So what's your favorite widget, Amber? <laughs> well, unsurprisingly, you know how much I love pronunciation. So it's got to be one of our speaking widgets. Um, there's a particular one. It's called, it has a record audio function. Um, and so the student says a word or a sentence and then it listens to it and then it gives real automated feedback on their pronunciation. Um, so it's such a great way for students to monitor their own progress. Um, 
I'd say because the feedback is so tangible uh, and of course they can retry as many times as they like. It really is amazing. And these widgets are great, <laughs> but they are only part of the lesson. Mm. When we created the whole course for each of the different levels, we set out with clear objectives. We focused on using the materials in such a way that it would aid the students to learn uh, and recall prior learning. And we created a really amazing syllabus for the students, mm. but it, it didn't quite work out how we'd imagined. <laughs> Yes, that's right. We had a very carefully designed curriculum. So according to a really fantastic book and resource, it's uh, called Language Curriculum Design by John McAllister and ISP Nation. Curriculum design is very, very important. Um, now, one of the reasons why we love this um, resource and wanted to mention it today is a particular model or diagram that's given in this book. Um, uh, and we'll display this up on screen for all our listeners to have a look at. So this model contains a, a range of different circles and in particular the inner circle, um, as you can see here, represents the syllabus. And by combining both of the circles, you get the curriculum. And yes, so looking at this model, we started with these clear goals, but it wasn't quite enough. What we needed to also incorporate was the student needs and the students learning environment because they mm. heavily influence curriculum as well. So our learning based system actually allowed us to analyze how the students were interacting and using our courses. We then held focus groups and actually asked the students what they wanted. The outcome was really interesting actually what we found was what we first designed was wonderful but mostly if you were focusing on uh, learning as a student with a teacher leading you now when you take away the teacher leading the class element and you focus on it being student self-studying then everything changes and what we found was the students wanted to choose what to study and when. So for example, today they might want to focus just on listening as a skill or they wanted to understand a grammar feature that they, they had questions about. So we actually went back and redesigned all the courses <laughs> and restructured them so that they actually yeah. reflected these student needs. Mm, and I think that this is that's one of the reasons why I feel, I think we all agree that this is really groundbreaking work that we're doing here. This kind of responsiveness to, to student needs, making it exactly what they are asking for and what helps them learn and study best. And I think just kind of on that note about one of the best ways for learners to learn, I'd just like to mention um, one of my favorite, um, I guess, quotes from the, the McAllister and Nation book. I'm just gonna read it out loud here. Um, so the quote says, the monitoring and assessment part of the inner circle represents the need to give attention to observing, testing the results of learning and providing feedback to the learners about their progress. It is often not a part of commercially designed courses. And this is something we have tried so hard to include as part of our courses. It's so true. And I feel really proud that it actually is a key integral part of our system, that the mm. students are getting real feedback on their progress at every point in their learning. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Well, turning now to something a little bit different, um, a number of research studies have shown that the use of technology in language learning increases learner autonomy and learner engagement. So in other words, learners feel they have greater control over their learning and they're more motivated. So what are your thoughts on this, Kayleen? How can learners use E2 School to support their own study in an effective way? Oh, that's such a great question. <laughs> I, I feel like a lot of this is going back to the original concept of the student's motivation, and mm. that is so key here. But I guess what helps with this motivation is starting by setting good study habits mm. that once you've got the motivation to learn, you need to also create good habits. And once these habits are in place, the habits will encourage you and enable you to actually keep your learning process going, mm. even mm. when you're feeling a little bit unmotivated on certain days, because it happens to us all. It really does. <laughs> 
<laughs> so for me, I think, you know, you can start by setting your own goals, uh, mm. but you can then also choose what to study and when. So maybe you mm. can choose Monday is your reading day. Mm. Tuesday can be listening. Wednesday can be writing. Thursday can be speaking. And then Friday can be a grammar focus. Mm. Or you could do a little bit of each of those on one day. Again, it's your choice what habit you go for. Mm. Um, but for me, I think the fact that you can actually jump in and out of these lessons as you like, uh, if you need to take a week off, then it's possible. It's, mm. it's, you can pause it whenever you need to, and you can mm. come back and continue from where you left off. Those are really, really good points. I really agree with you. Um, and I think something else that I'd like to add is, as we've spoken about a little bit before with this idea of feedback, uh, taking note of the instant feedback that we've tried really hard to include in our lessons is really important because it helps students learn from their mistakes, which is the best way to learn, really. Um, so, for example, as we uh, have also mentioned, Speaking Lab has its automated pronunciation feedback feature. And I'll give a little bit of information now about exactly how that works. So it employs a color-coded system to give students information about their production, or in other words, their pronunciation of each individual phoneme or sound within a word. Uh, so for example, if a student is mispronouncing the word cat as cot, the two consonant phonemes of k and t will appear as green uh, because they're correct. But this vowel in the middle, this one's going to display as red or incorrect. So using this information, the student can then try again and they know precisely which area to work on, which sound. So for example, if a student is mispronouncing the word cup as cap, the two consonant phonemes of k and p will appear as green because they're correct, but the vowel sound is going to display as red or incorrect. So using this information, the student can try again and they know exactly which area to work on. So I'm going to have a go at this and be oh. a bad student. So <laughs> here is the record audio button and I need to say cup incorrectly and say it as uh, Let's cap. Let's do cap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cap. And the computer now analyzes. It will take a moment to return mm -hmm. my feedback. So I can listen to myself say that again and I can compare it with our original correct pronunciation. And I've got a yellow result, which tells me it's not quite right. Mm. I've got 50% overall, but I can go for more detail and actually have a look at this. And I got the p right, but I got the beginning and the middle incorrect. So oh. it, it gives me clear feedback and it tells me that I need to work on both of the first sound and that second sound. Mm, exactly. And I think the other thing that the good thing is about this is that um, not only does it identify um, sometimes whether or not the sound is the correct sound, it will also give the student feedback about the volume of the sound. So for mm. example, that k sound, even though that was the correct sound, it might not have been um, in proportion to the volume of the other sounds, which is why it might have had a lower score here. Exactly. But still, I find the technology that we've got working behind that one widget is mm. just phenomenal and I love how what it can do for us <laughs> so Same. I guess my 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 other thing that I would give as a uh, feedback for students. So the last main tip, I guess, is about live classes. Mm. So all of the levels have live classes associated with them. And these are run by a teacher where the teacher will take the student through a lesson that's connected with these classes. And so I thought, let's talk about these live classes in a bit more detail. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought maybe, Amber, you could start. What would you give as a tip for students and how to get the best experience out of going and joining us in these live classes? Mm, absolutely. Well, I, I think my number one tip is just to participate as much as you can. So for some live classes, this might just mean being really active in the chat box um, if it's taking place on Zoom. So that's like, for example, writing any questions that you have, um, asking the teacher for clarification or asking them to give another example. Um, also encouraging your fellow students, congratulating them when they've done something well or asked a really thoughtful question. Um, 
But in a number of our, uh, of our live classes here on E2 School, there's also the opportunity to go beyond just engaging in the chat box and to actually volunteer to speak in front of the class. So this is something just a little bit different to what we've previously done in Zoom webinars, as it involves manually turning on and off the student's microphone. But it's really just been the most incredible experience, truly incredible and really so humbling to see the progress of the students who regularly volunteer to participate. Um, so I, I would really encourage students to participate in this way where possible too. Um, and plus from my perspective as a teacher, it's so special to hear the you know, students' voices from all around the world that has that really personal connection too. You can talk to the teacher, the teacher can hear your voice. Um, and another sort of observation on this is for a number of students, I've noticed that it can take a while to, to work up the courage to volunteer, to put their hand up, to participate in this way. But once they start, they love it. And uh, as I said, the, the progress that I see each time when you put yourself out there, when you go a little bit beyond your comfort zone, especially with regard to speaking, it makes a really profound difference to your progress. Oh, you're so right, Amber. And you mm. have been instrumental with a lot of the <laughs> interesting techniques we, we are trying already uh, and incorporating into our lessons because you've experimented with these different techniques. Mm. And I think it's, it's testament to you as a teacher, but also to the student's willingness and adaptability yes. and enthusiasm yeah. because they've embraced pretty much everything you've tried with them and oh. I know that I've when I've tried them sometimes I've had technical hitches and yes. yet they are still so wonderful with their responses oh, I think the so other thing true. I love is the feedback from the students not mm. just to me as the teacher in the class but to the other students so whenever I've turned on someone's microphone and had them talk the other students all provide such amazing mm. feedback in the chat box and I think that that's such a wonderful experience and mm. I don't know I think it helps motivate the students themselves as well so much so. We really do have the best students in the world here at E2. I firmly, firmly believe that. I, I love what you said about this, the willingness to go along with us as we try new things and experiment. And I, you know, it's interesting, actually, the, the idea to turn on a, a microphone came about from a, it was a technical accident, actually. I had intended to set up a Zoom meeting uh, with, you know, video and audio, and instead I ticked webinar. And so in that moment, I thought, well, I need to find a way to get these microphones on. And but the students were so wonderful and so accommodating and so willing to try this out. And it's sort of, you know, I think some great discoveries can come from accidents sometimes as well. <laughs> with that I know, openness I know that when uh, we've got slightly different classes in that our mm. students can be completely different every session and uh, it's it's a dynamic enrollment which means that the students come and go as their timetable and as their life uh, affords them the availability mm. I know that we've got some students um, who have had to return to school and now can no longer join our live classes and they are sorely missed but yeah. when they they have no school days and they join us it's it's lovely to see them back in class and the other students get so so excited I think that's yes again this is one of this really special things about E2 even in you know in theory what would be kind of very you know sort of um, a group of, of strangers, I suppose, coming together each time. But it's thanks to the students that it no longer feels like strangers each lesson. They've built this community, they ask about each other, they say, where's this student when they're not in class? And it's that sort of that caring network that you build. I think language learning is so much, not only a, a sort of a self-study thing, Although it's so important to have those tools to build your own knowledge, but language is at its essence a communicative tool. And by reaching out to other learners of English, uh, the best way you can do that is through live classes, um, you're building your network in English. So I totally agree. And I feel like some of these best ideas that we're incorporating have actually come from our students. <laughs> they have. The very best have been the students' ideas. Themselves. And I feel like at the end of the day, that's that's my advice for any student out there. Uh, whatever mm -hmm. class you're going to, make sure you use your chat box 
and talk to your student, the other students in the class, talk to your teacher. Don't forget that we are not um, gods, that we can't read your mind. And <laughs> the only way we know what you're thinking is when you tell us it. And we appreciate hearing everything from you guys. Uh, we can't answer questions all uh, instantly, but we do get around to them as soon as we can. But what I love is when I've got students asking a question and I'm in the middle of explaining a point and another student then comes along and actually answers that question in the chat box. I think that it for me is the most amazing experience because mm. not only does it show me that the students are working together, but mm. that the second student has understood that idea and has the ability to explain it in a way that someone else can learn from it as well. Um, that's so true. Don't, don't they say one of the best ways to learn is to teach? That's so um, true. Mm, mm, yeah. It's, it's, it's so, magic, those moments, that that in the chat box that that interaction that you described mm. i guess at the end of the day it the our our key takeaway for any student is become involved yeah the, the more involved yes. the the more you will be in control of your own learning and mm -hmm. that's what it's all about mm -hmm. so i guess mm -hmm. this brings us back to our original topic and <laughs> the the focus of this whole podcast which is how learning has shaped technology so i guess the final question for me is what Amber, how do you think this will affect our role as a teacher going forward? I think the one word that really springs to mind is that this the nature of the role, especially when it comes to innovations in technology, it's our role is ever changing because as we experiment with new technology, we push boundaries, we listen to feedback from the students, we're going to change and adjust our approach. Um, and so I think it's, it's, yes, it's this idea of experimentation and seeing what the, both the technology and also what your students are capable of doing. Um, uh, and so, you know, kind of thinking about next steps, one of, it's quite an exciting um, uh, project we're working on at the moment, it's to have a activities in our live classes that incorporate our platform technology so we can see the students doing the activities in real time. So it's bringing that sort of engagement beyond the chat box and onto our website. So yeah, that's our, that's our new sort of uh, direction at the moment. And of course, all we need to get this technology working is time. So the dev <laughs> yes. team have a big job on their hands to yes. fix up the, the back end of everything so that it can make it possible. But I know they will. And I'm <laughs> super excited for the day when that does become a reality for us. Me too, me too. Exciting times ahead. Well, Kayleen, thank you so much for, for talking uh, to me today, for all your insights that you've shared and for the amazing work that you do with our E2 students. Oh, thank, thank you. you too, Amber. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. And thank you, everybody, for listening today. Look forward to seeing you in another E2 Talks episode. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to the podcast. I hope it was of interest to you. Remember to check out e2school.com if you want to improve your fundamental language skills around grammar and pronunciation and vocabulary, because these are the key ingredients to language from which you can then go and do some test prep and prepare for your tests on e2language.com. Thanks for watching. My name is Jay. I'll see you soon.